Hello world, it is Monday, October 19th, and it's kind of a rainy uh, morning this morning, which is not all a bad thing because of the winter wheat in this area needs a little bit of rain. It does slow down the harvest, but um, it's a balance that needs to be struck, and that's often what life is, a balance that needs to be struck. <clears throat> the um, devotion for today is entitled Shackles of Defeat written by Kaji Dosa. Kaji bases the devotion upon Philippians chapter 1, verses 13b through 14, New International Version. I am in chains for Christ, and because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. <clears throat> and Kaji writes, The Apostle Paul spent a good portion of his Christian life in prison, thanks to a state that had no idea what to do with them. Many would have interpreted his imprisonment as a sign of defeat. Certainly the state would have preferred this. Why else do we lock people away but to get them under control? Today, one of the greatest issues we face with mass incarceration is the way that we structure imprisonment with defeat. In so many cases, you pay your debt to society, then get released with nothing but the skills and contacts with which you entered. You exit a jail, and in so many circumstances, you have no right to vote. Defeat is written into our policies around incarceration that codify disempowerment. But some of Paul's most powerful words were written in jail cells. Paul took the chains of the state and preached fearless liberation. The state may have had him in shackles, but as far as he was concerned, he would be bound to nothing but the love of God. Shackles can come off, but God's love clings forever. But are we taking off the shackles? <clears throat> Excuse me, but are we taking off the shackles here in America, or do they just shift forms? And the prayer. May we always know that we are never defeated, O oh God. Amen. Well, this made me think of several different things that have been going on that I've been involved with. Um <clears throat> One of which is, of course, our um, racism discussion, currently discussing Stamped, um, the book Stamped, Racism, Anti-Racism, and You, and looking at the history of, of racism in the United States, um, something that's really only been around for about 400 years, I guess, um, 1619. Uh, when the first African uh, Africans were brought to this continent to be slaves. And uh, how even, I was struck by how even when the chains of slavery were removed, they were replaced, much as Kaji references, um, just shifted form. Because not long after slavery ended, then... Um, sharecropping began and Jim Crow laws were put into place limiting the freedoms of um, black folk. And it wasn't just in the South, it was also in the North. Um, many Northerners were against slavery, but they weren't necessarily for equality. So different shackles. I've also been listening to a, uh, a podcast called Nice White Parents, which takes a look at um, school system in New York City over the years and and um, different movements that have occurred um, and well-meaning white folk getting involved in things but then limiting their own personal involvement. So it's a lot to think about. We think sometimes we're doing something good but then the good we do just puts different shackles on people. And that's why the work needs to continue and to keep going. A lot to think about today. Hope you have a good day, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. And I guess as um, Kaji prayed, may we always know that we are never defeated. Amen. <laughs>